Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. So it has been a minute, as I said earlier uh, this year. Uh, I'm a little busy working on uh, a story I'm writing, and I haven't been able to watch as many games, but I have uh, watched some recent games, and I have a ton of thoughts on this Jonathan Kaminga stuff and where the Warriors are now. So let's get to it. If you have heard me talk about coming up before, I've always been a huge fan. Uh, I said after he was drafted, me and my buddy Aram in Toronto, who uh, has been on the show a bunch, the day after he got drafted, uh, we thought that he was going to be the Warriors' best player in four years. And that is basically into next season, right? The 2025 uh, season and he looks like he might be on track I'll be honest right we revisited this idea at the beginning of this season in our preseason preview and of course Steph is what this Warriors team is he's the center of it all etc and as long as he is healthy and shooting and stays in great condition all that good stuff he will be the Warriors best player but Kaminga already as of now is likely top three or four on the Warriors right at this very moment, just in terms of what he is bringing night in, night out. First off, shout out to everybody out there who wanted to trade Jonathan Kaminga. And let's be clear, there were probably kind of two factions of uh, Warriors fan that wanted to trade Kaminga. The first was the one that just thought, at age 21, he is what he's going to be, just an athletic freak who doesn't know how to play basketball. A lot of those folks just wanted to move off of Kaminga because they couldn't see uh, beyond what he is right now. In my opinion, those are some of the same people that would probably would have traded uh, Clay Thompson if he were uh, a third-year player at this point <laughs> because uh, he couldn't make layups, you know, back in the day. So a lot of knee-jerk stuff because you just you know, want to maximize Steph and Kaminga was an asset. And then there's people who understand that Kaminga has talent and that he was projecting to be good, but they just wanted to move off of him because he wasn't going to be good enough soon enough. And we're seeing that that's not the case. And Steve Kerr is seeing that that is not the case. Let me, let me tell you something. So they just beat the Sixers. Uh, last night and it's been exactly 10 games since that Denver Nuggets game where Kaminga was benched for some random reason in the final 18 minutes the one at home where uh, Nikola Jokic hit that buzzer beater three off the glass from just past half court the one that pretty much you know was the last straw the straw that broke the camel's back and Kamingo was leaked, quoted, whatever, saying that he had lost faith in Steve Kerr. Oh, my goodness. So it has been 10 games since then. And in those 10 games, uh, Kamingo has gone on to average 21.2 points, 6 rebounds, 2.1 assists, while shooting 59% from the field, 45% from three, and 79% from the free throw line, a free throw line that not many other dudes on this Warriors team can get to uh, beyond Steph. And even Steph, he doesn't get the whistle, and we know that. So Kaminga has come along, and this is what we've always wanted. The whole thing was that, yes, he's not perfect. No, he's not a final product, but he's immensely talented, and the eye test, everything reported, It just made it seem like he wanted to be great, wanted to be good. And also, he wants his next contract, right? He wants as big of a rookie extension as he can get, right? So when you're looking at Jonathan Kaminga, it's like, this is what we want to play through the mistakes. You know, let him play through those mistakes and let him learn and then teach him. Apparently, that really wasn't going on. I mean, we'd heard murmurs over the last couple years that the vets have not been good at mentoring the youngsters. Uh, Now maybe they've kind of changed their tune. 
right? And it took Jonathan Kaminga. You know, there's a lot of revisionist history going on right now because I see a lot of comments on The Athletic, on, you know, online about Steve Kerr. You know, no, no, he doesn't deserve the criticism because look at Kaminga. The Warriors, they can develop young guys. And look, this is the perfect time. He just wasn't ready yet. Oh, that's, you know, that's, that's not true. That's not true. Go back to when Wiggins was out for a couple months last season and watch Kaminga. You know, yes, could have rebounded more. Yes, his like team defense wasn't, you know, wasn't where it needs to be. And still, it's not exactly there. But he was doing what they needed to do. The reason why <laughs> was because Kerr wouldn't play him. Again, Anthony Lamb last season. Again, they were fighting and chasing wins because they were in such a hole because of Draymond's punch that they had to play. Kerr went with his default, his uh, security blanket, which is playing veterans and dudes who went to Vermont for four years. So, you know, it took up until that Denver game and for Kaminga to make a stink because if he didn't make a stink about it, it's a good chance that Kaminga is playing the same type of yo-yo minutes that Kerr was playing him before, right? Like, oh, you know, just sit him, you know, sit him during the last 18 minutes, even though he's been like the best player on the court, you know? So this has forced the issue. And there's a lot of people that have looked at what media reports say about Kaminga. You go back to Stephen A. Smith two summers ago saying that uh, there's murmurs that Kaminga doesn't work very hard or that he doesn't practice hard or he doesn't have good habits. That never came to fruition. That, that, that seems like it was all BS. And then you have Kaminga uh, being a malcontent uh, during the Kings series in the playoffs. I mean, you know, that's competitiveness. And obviously I wasn't there, but all of a sudden that was spread and put out as hot takes is like, oh, he's this kind of guy, this kind of player. No, no. And that's wrong. And then in this case, it was also put out there. I mean, I thought, oh, man, this is terrible because Kaminga is going to get traded. But, you know, cooler heads prevailed. Uh, I'm sure Lake uh, Dunleavy, they see Kaminga, they see what they have in him, and they don't want to just start tossing all of their draft talent, especially one that is legit, and then uh, lose them there. But, you know, I'll give Kerr some credit for uh, helping or being open to <laughs> playing coming instead of just shutting down. Cause obviously we know that there's coaches and people uh, in, in the NBA and in our daily lives that would just, no, shut it down. You're done. You're, you move this guy. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's, that's to Kerr's credit, but then also that's, it's Kaminga, man. Like he spoke up and he has performed. He put it out there. He stood on what he did. He he talked the talk and walked the walk. So that is an intangible that you cannot underestimate about who this kid is. And it's in line of what a lot of us Kaminga fans, followers, whatever, guys who've believed in him, have expected. So again, what the Warriors have here is a situation where they may have dodged a Kerr bullet because <laughs> this was kind of looking like last season. Yeah, like Kaminga and Wiseman are, are different, but the situation where like, you know, let's, I prefer vets. And so let's go with vets. And then, and then let's just forget what these youngsters can do. The vets have been terrible this year. And so finally Kaminga basically took a hold of his destiny. Uh, he got an opportunity and he has run with it. And now we're seeing this lineup. It's also kind of funny because I know a lot of people that I interact with on YouTube, um, on Twitter. Uh, I mean, you're on board with this because for a long time last season, that first loss season, uh, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Kaminga, Draymond is the lineup that we all wanted to see, right? And that's the one that Kurt's going with now. And it's strange because like, you know, Again, it's like, oh, he came up with this lineup. That's why I never bought the idea that Wiggins and Kaminga couldn't play well together. What they always needed was a second and in some way, sometimes a third ball handler, creator, connector, whatever you want to call it. 
you have Steph, and now you have Draymond, right? Uh, sometimes you have Pajemski out there. Other times, if CP gets healthy and he's still on the team, you'll have Chris Paul out there. The whole thing was like, there are no other bigs besides Draymond who can be connectors on this squad. There are no other uh, front court players. So it's either Steph, uh, Pods, uh, CP3, and those dudes are all small. And Draymond's different because obviously as good of a point guard as CP is, Draymond operates with Steph, operates in this Warriors offense. He has so much like institutional knowledge and whatnot. And then Pods, of course, uh, he's not necessarily a pure point guard. He's still a rookie. He doesn't know some of these guys as well as Draymond probably does. So this is the lineup. I don't know if it will survive as a starting lineup uh, because the punishment Draymond's going to take. This is, you know, we've talked about this over the years that Draymond as your starting center for a full season, even a half season, is going to be rough on his body. Well, you know, he's been suspended for a bunch, so he's missed almost half the season, so maybe uh, it'll work for him. But to me, this lineup of Steph, Clay, Wiggins, uh, 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 Kaminga, and Draymond, that is the closest thing to approximating the vaunted Warriors death lineups over the years. I mean, it's not there. It's an approximation because even though Steph is still Steph, you know, yeah, he's definitely lost a step. Clay obviously has fallen off. Uh, Draymond is still Draymond, and he's played well when he's been available this season. But you could also say that he's just older. Fact of the matter, he's older. He's shooting better, but he's older. And then uh, if you have Wiggins and Kaminga, let's toss some other people that have been in those positions. Uh, Kevin Durant, Andre Godala, Harrison Barnes, right? Like, Although Barnes is not in the same breath as Andre and uh, and KD, like Wiggins is not a facilitator. And for some reason, he's just starting to play well now, whether that's because he's heard rumors of being traded, whether because Draymond has uh, really lit a fire on him or under him or has just given him more confidence. Well, I don't know what uh, or if he just something happened and something just clicked. I have no idea. No one's asked about it. That's the thing that kills me. Can someone ask Andrew Wiggins, like, what was wrong with you for the first 40 games of the season for the most part, right? Some people say his defense has been good. Sure. Yeah, in spots here and there. But, like, for the rest of the season, where was the aggression? Where was the force at the rim that he showed against, you know, Philly, against the Lakers? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm curious about. Um, And then Kaminga... Again, I think that guy has so much talent, but he's just not there in terms of... I mean, his handle is actually surprisingly more... uh, uh, (laughs) It's actually surprisingly better than I expected it to be at this point when he's out there, right? He's he's still loose with it uh, if you kind of get him on a double team or if he spins and and, drop steps, pivots, and and the second guy comes and he can swipe the ball. But he's much better, but he's still not like where Andre or Kevin Durant were when they were uh, playing with the Warriors, of course. So, you know, things are promising. I'm excited by this lineup. In terms of the trade deadline, I mean, there was all that chatter. And, you know, at this point, I just don't see anybody that is worth trading. Like, Kaminga, there's nobody out there that I would trade Kaminga for because you see he's climbing and... But around the league, it's just it's just starting. You know what I mean? So he hasn't established his value. You'd be selling low on him. Lori Markinen is a name that uh, people on YouTube have talked to me about. And, you know, that's that's fair. But Lori Markinen is not really on the market. And if he were, you would have to give up so much to get him. And is that really worth it? Is it? Is he really going to change it? And then what you lose... What kind of position are you in in the future? I just don't know if that's responsible for this season in terms of like winning, in terms of payroll for the future. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. And then other guys in the league, you know, I I don't trade him for DeJounte Murray, uh, Alex Caruso, uh, who uh, Bridges, Mikhail Bridges. You know, again, that's a situation where do you really want to give up a ton because the cost for bridges would be a lot. And then you look at it and it's like, well, you know, Kaminga like for his current salary and then like how good he's getting. uh, I do project Kaminga to be better than uh, Miguel Bridges in the future, plain and simple. 
You know what I mean? He can do a lot of things. What you're saying with, with uh, JK is that, and we've talked about this for the last few years, it's like he can obviously get to the basket. His mid-range is getting a lot better, and he's getting more selective with his three. And all those things, all those things. A dude with that athleticism who can score at all three levels, who you'll have to guard at the three-point line by next season, they won't be leaving him. And then he can get by you. He'll learn how to pass. He can do stuff. He doesn't panic as much. He has counters when he's in the lane, right? That was something I talked to people uh, in the YouTube comments about earlier in the season. Like, he needs to figure out some counters. And he's doing that. You know what I mean? Like, we've seen him, like, pump fake and then go do, do up and unders. He can get to either side of the rim. And he's also been judicious about passing out of things. And all this stuff is because he's getting playing time. You know, we've been asking, you know, saying this guy needs 20, 25, 30 minutes a game. This is what he was getting when Wiggins was out last season. But, you know, but now the last couple of games, he's like gotten 40 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, and you're seeing that. So let him <laughs> help him help you. That's what I say to the vets. That's what I say to Steve Kerr. And so Steve Kerr has seen the light. He has seen the light. And, you know, that whole mumbo jumbo of like, oh, Wiggs and Kaminga can't play well together. I mean, that's because Wiggins wasn't playing well. You know, Wiggins was DOA beginning of the season. And I just think that I like Wiggins and people who are saying like, you know, don't disrespect Wiggins and like all this stuff. I mean, come on. You didn't know that he would come around and he hasn't fully. Right. I hope he does, but he hasn't fully. And hey, he could be increasing his trade value as well, because if you are the Warriors front office, it's like, OK, you have Wiggins. Do you trade him because he's looked better to get off his contract in the future and then start penciling in uh, Jonathan Kaminga as the starting small forward from here on out into the future? You know, so uh, that's where that kind of lies. And then for me, for me. You know, uh, taking a step back from some of these games, some of these podcast episodes, uh, it's it's giving me some perspective here, right? And like, obviously, R.I.P. to Decky. That was terrible, terrible news, and uh, really, really sad. And uh, just again, not to sound corny, but like, it does put things in a bit of a perspective. And it's just like, you know. I, I have no expectations this season. I'm going to pull hard for this team. I'm going to be feeling bad when I watch them lose. I'm going to be uh, jumping up for joy when they win. But I'm just trying to enjoy the ride. You know what I mean? Every sports fan, the heart of being a sports fan is having hope. Having hope. You know what I mean? Throughout the 90s, there was no hope. Yeah. Throughout the early 2000s. There was some hope, <laughs> but then it would always fall apart. And with this dynasty team, there is always, always hope. But the thing is, is that early in the season, the first half of the season, they were doing everything they could to kill the hope. <laughs> Draymond getting suspended again and again. Uh, Wiggins being like a giant question mark. Clay, just, I don't know what he was doing out there, you know? And Steph, he looks dog tired. He's been carrying this team from the beginning. Let Kaminga carry some of it, but you need hope. And what we have with this five-man unit is some hope. Hope of making a dent, hope of being wildly entertained, seeing something different, the hope that Jonathan Kaminga can actually be that connective guy. I mean, he's right there in front of you. Everybody talks about the Spurs analogy. It's right there, right? You have uh, Steph is Tim Duncan. Uh Manu Ginobili is Clay Thompson. Uh, Draymond is Tony Parker. And Kaminga can be Kawhi. He is right there. You want an extender to the future, a bridge to the future? There's your guy. We've been searching for it, but he was the most obvious one because he was the most talented guy the Warriors have drafted so far. You know what I mean? And he may not reach Kawhi levels, but the kid's 21 and he's looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good. You know, and again, the hope is there. Is it irrational? I don't think so. Is it uh, top end hopes, high, you know, expectations, ideal dreams, whatever you want to call it? Yeah. Yeah. But that's what keeps us going is the hope. And the hope is that 
I mean, this team is where they are is because Draymond was gone. Clay was chasing shots and playing poorly. Wiggins was awful. And Kerr was not playing the young dudes. And now Kerr has wised up, is finally playing the young dudes. And Draymond is on the court. He's available. Clay is, you know, playing more within himself. And Wiggins has shown up. So, like, these guys, if they can play, they're available and they can play well, then, hey, give me the play-in. I'll take it. Just get in. Get into the thing. I think they'll still get in at this point, the way they've been looking. You get CP back. Do you move him? Who knows? Do you get, you know, Gary Payton back? Do you move him? Who knows? But what this Warriors team... Uh, has is finally a little bit of hope. And that's because of Kaminga, Draymond, Kerr, Wiggins, Clay, whatever, starting to look and feel a little bit more like a legitimate team instead of a dysfunctional, confused family. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave me a comment. Do all that fun stuff. Give me a shout out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. All right.